بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده Dear respected viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to a brand new episode of the program entitled To Ask the Origin Our today's topic for discussion is Be optimistic Negativity and pessimism today engulf all of us one way or another Each and every one of us today we see in the world in one form or other we face different sort of calamities, challenges, have dealt with it, experienced with it. Some may be in the present, some are in the present, um, past. So as Muslims, how do we deal with it? What does the Quran teach us about being optimistic? What were the traits of our noble prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? All of this and many more, inshallah, we will be finding out in our, in our today's program. But in order to do this, we have with us a very renowned scholar. He is the first British Bangladeshi who is the Imam and Khatib of the Regent's Park Mosque, famously known as London Central Mosque. He is the graduate of Al Azhar University, Fadilat al-Shaykh Qadi Lutfur Rahman. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. First of all, thank you very much again, once again, for being so late here in the studio with us. Barakallah fikum. Thank you very much uh, for organizing this uh, very auspicious and beneficial program. All pleasure is mine. Dear viewers, it's a live interactive program where you will be able to participate, engage, discuss with us. In order to do this, in a few while you will see our telephone number appearing at the bottom of your TV screen. But for your convenience, our telephone number is 0208 523 4111. And please feel free to ask any questions related to the topic. Sheikh, as I've introduced our today's topic for discussion is be optimistic. Now, especially this week, when everyone is waking up to a very unique sort of news, different sort of news, especially Muslims are very distressed. Some are very fearful, scared, or even when we look at the social media, people are very, very worried. Now, out of all of this that's there, it's been happening for some time, future challenges that we might face. As Muslims, what should our role be? And can we still be optimistic after all of this that's happening in the world today? Good question. Um, inshallah, we'll uh, elaborate on this topic, inshallah, um, in details tonight. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wal aqibatu lil muttaqeen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al anbiya wal mursaleen, nabiyyina Muhammad ibn Abdullahi, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi tayyibin al tahirin. ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. ثم ما بعد I testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and I testify that Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him is the slave and final messenger of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. The topic um, of our discussion tonight is optimism, positivity. I uh, think and I believe it is a very, very important topic that we need to uh, remind ourselves, we need to educate ourselves. Now, as uh, for human beings, we are all human beings, we, our lives are full of difficulties, problems, tests, trials and tribulations, calamities, masaib. So our lives is a pattern. We have different phases. Sometimes we're happy, other times we are upset. Uh, sometimes we're laughing and there are times we are crying. So we have got these pattern ups and down in our life. So life is, um, it has a lot of problems, it has a lot of difficulties. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent us to this world in order to test us. So he says in Surah Al-Mulk, خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created death and life in order to test us which one, of, which one of us is best in terms of good deeds. خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he clarified, he made it clear that this, is, this life is test, it's a, it's, it's, it's a life full of problems and difficulties. Now, a true Muslim, a true believer, a true human being should be ready to welcome 
these challenges, difficulties and problems with a smiley face. And that is the teaching of Allah, the Almighty, teaching of our Prophet Muhammad Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamu Alayhi. A Muslim is by nature is hard working, sacrificing. He is ready to go through the hardship. Look at the beautiful ayah of the Holy Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Laqad khalaqna al insana fi kabad. Laqad khalaqna al insana fi kabad. We have created human beings from the difficulties. Al mashaqqa wa su'uba. Human beings were created to go through these difficulties, to go through these challenges. So laqad khalaqna al insana fi kabad. Ay min al mashaqqati wa su'uba. Yes. The trials and tribulations of this world, the masaib or shadaid wal mihan, the difficulties in this world, it worries us, it makes us worried. They make us anxious. At times, they even make us feared about the problems and situations. And by nature, human beings, they do feel because we are human beings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, with regards to this matter, خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ هَلُوعًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He created the human beings from hala. Hala is, means the worry, the fear, the, the phobia. So the human beings have this kind of uh, feelings, emotions of, of, of worry, emotions of, of anxiety, emotions of being, uh, being scared at times. So this is the nature of human beings. But anything, there's a beautiful Arabic saying, that if anything becomes excessive, that it becomes a problem and it becomes harmful. An excessive worry, excessive negativity, and pessimism is something re discarded and rejected in our religion. So, before I proceed, I quickly want to maybe define or give the meaning of the word optimism. Some of us we might think, what is optimism? What is the meaning of the word optimism? So according to Cambridge Dictionary, it says, the meaning of optimism is hopefulness and confidence about the future or the success of something. So being confident, being positive about the future events, and that is optimism. And the word opposite to optimism is the pessimism. And it says that a tendency to see the worst aspect of things or believe that the worst will happen. So a person always thinks, oh, negative, something bad will happen, will never be successful, will never succeed, will never be able to do anything, will never be able to produce anything. So that kind of mentality or that kind of thoughts are part of pessimism. So uh, optimism is something uh, highly encouraged and motivated in our religion. Mm, I had a question there. Now, sometimes we do notice a lack of confidence within ourselves. Does it not help us in developing the feeling of being pessimistic rather than being optimistic? Yes. So therefore, when we look at uh, the traditions of Prophet Muhammad, the text from the Holy Quran, the text from Hadith, we understand, you know, the, 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 the science of psychology, it, it covers this aspect uh, mm. quite highly. But when we look at the Holy Quran, when we look at our religion, we have profound teachings uh, regarding being optimistic and positive in our life. So confidence is very, very important. Jazakallah for, reminder, for the reminder. Um, I wanted to say that being optimistic is the root of all success. Mm -hmm. Positivity, being positive in life in general, as a, as an individual, as a member of society, as a member of as a, as a part of community, being positive is the root of all success, and being pessimist or negative is the root of all the failures. And this is mm -hmm. something really important. So we have to have the sense of confidence. I would like to also refer you to um, some of the uh, two hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamu Alayhi. When we look at our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, no one can have more tests and tribulations than Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Indeed. Almost all sons died, passed away, raised, was raised as an orphan. Uh, father passed away, then mother passed away, then grandfather, then, then uncle. So he was orphan in, and, and he was raised in that kind of sad and difficult situation. Yet Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was happy, positive, and he was 
optimistic in every situation, whether in war or in peace, whether in battle, whether in 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 in, uh, in, in uh, whether in thirst or in in being like uh, in f in normal conditions, you name and you see Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi He was very very optimistic, and I would like to mention a hadith that every one of us we listen, let, try and listen this hadith carefully and properly. Now, um, this hadith is mentioned in Sahih in Al Bukhari. Uh, on the authority of Sayyidina Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. Where Sayyidina Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu says, قَالَ سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ يَقُولُ That I've heard from Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam saying that لا طيرة No, there is no divination. Now, طيرة was a method of judging or finding out someone's luck and fortune at the time of Jahiliyyah. So what the desert Arabs or the the people at that, at that time, what they would do, they would bring a bird and they would send the bird. If the bird would go towards the right, then they're lucky and they have the good fortune. And if the bird goes towards the left, then they have bad luck and they have bad fortune. So Prophet Sallallahu said, لا طيرة, No divination in Islam. It was rejected in Islam. But then he says, وخيرها الفعل And the best of it and best thing is the fa'l. And then Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they asked, what is fa'al? وَمَا الْفَأَلْ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَالُ وَمَا الْفَأَلْ قَالَ الْكَلِمَةُ الصَّالِحَةِ يَسْمَعُهَا أَحَدُكُمْ So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, a good word that one of you hears. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he rejected finding out in such a way that you send a bird, if it goes towards the right, then you have good luck. If, you, if it goes towards the, uh, towards the left, then you have bad luck. And we have these kind of things even it, th these kind of natures still exist in, in, our, in our societies, in some of the Muslim world. I've, I used to hear when I was young that if certain birds, uh, you know, uh, tweet in certain ways, then the musibah or the bad things will happen. And, and that's how some of our elderly people, they still have this kind of uh, beliefs. Of course, these are like um, not from Quran or, or Hadith of Rasulullah So basically, these are, we do notice in our backgrounds that a lot of superstitions is absolutely, that the correct word absolutely to use? correct superstitions that yes might not be directly with the forms of islam but somehow it might have been culturally influenced absolutely correct yes so that's right how do we make sure and distinguish between an element of superstition and element of up um the some of the things are quite obvious and apparent so when we when we look into it if someone has a minimum uh, level of uh, or standard of knowledge uh, and mm. minimum understanding of the, of, the, of the religion they can easily identify what is actually can be correct and authentic and genuine uh, generally seeking knowledge and the enhancing the understanding can always uh, solve these kind of problems coming back to hadith of our prophet muhammad alayhi, he says that la tirata so no divination but the best thing is the good words the positive words giving hope to people you know uh, there's nothing there's no rooms for negativity in our religion so he says al kalimatu saliha a beautiful word a kind word this is this can be uh, 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 this can this can heal this can be a, a source of confidence a source of hope in many people's lives so he said al kalimatu saliha yasma'uha ahadukum and also uh, another hadith recorded by imam muslim rahimahullah and he says that an anas ibn malik radiyallahu anhu on the authority of anas ibn malik radiyallahu anhu that prophet alayhi salatu wassalam said la adwa wa la tirata there is not any transitive disease Meaning, uh, at that time, and even some, some people up until today, they believe that if a disease comes to one person, then that will pass into this, the next person. Uh, and so that's how they become worried and they, they have fear. And uh, some people, they still have this belief. And at that time, time of Prophet Sallallahu some people used to have the belief of uh, you know a transitive disease. So Prophet Sallallahu said, there is no transitive disease because the person, the one who gives the disease is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We may have a, a patient, we may have a person ill and unwell for, for, for many, many years uh, in a house, but it doesn't mean that someone else will become um, ill because of that person. So transitive disease, that kind of beliefs, uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa rejected. And also he said no divination. Divination meaning the way to identify the good fortune or good luck. Sometimes people go to some people, some some for fortune tellers and they ask 
I will, um, mm. you know, if you can tell me whether I, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm successful or I'm, I have a bad luck or a good luck, all those things, as you have mentioned, superstitions, and some, most of the times they actually, they guess and they predict and at times they even lie. So, um, so it is very important to avoid those kind of things. And Prophet Sallallahu said, but good umen pleases me. The good umen, al-fa'al, meaning good words, positive words, being positive, being optimistic, that kind of things pleases me. Prophet Sallallahu he, he said, he make, these kind of things make me happy. The good word, al-kalimatu al-tayyiba. Now, you have mentioned earlier, Brother Qamar, that uh, the political situation, climate, we have seen in the region huge changes taking place, especially the changes in, in the United States of America, uh, also post-Brexit era in, in Britain. Many Muslims are worried, and uh, Muslims uh, I can see, and many of us, we have become very negative, and we, we, we lost, we're kind of losing the confidence not only in that, ourselves. Yeah. You're very right, not only that, there's an element of fear instilled within us. Absolutely correct. That we have been somehow uh, put into this sort of negative thought that the future will of be the Muslim is, Muslim is, is, is bad, is bad, or dark. going to us the disaster. Yes, or dark. yes. So, so, how do we combat this? I, I believe that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He mentioned in a verse in the Holy Quran, "Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lhafidun." We have revealed this doctrine. We have revealed this Sharia. We have revealed this revelations, the Holy Quran, and the responsibility of preservation is in our hands. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will preserve this religion, which doesn't mean that we do not do anything. We have no responsibilities. We have we don't try. We don't put efforts to change the circumstance and situation. But Allah Subhanahu, we have to have firm faith in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that Allah the Almighty will take care of us. Allah the Almighty will take care of Muslim Islam. He will take care of his religion, but we Muslims have to work and we have to act and we have to do our bits and then inshallah we'll see the better result. Now, with regards to the worrying condition situation, the, many of us have become pessimistic that all oh, things are happening, uh, Muslims are, you know, are, are losing everywhere, Muslims are being, uh, you know, uh, uh, Muslims are being uh, marginalized, persecuted in many, many places. So the situation of the Ummah in general, yes, is, it, it is bad. And some people, they try to use the situation and say, oh, so we can't really follow Islam at this time. So it is quite, you know, uh, it is quite impossible for us to practice the religion. And many of many Muslims I've heard they're saying even Islam it doesn't suit and it's not fit for this time and era because it's too old and it's not uh, it's not uh, it's not suitable for this time. So people say these things, but look at uh, the Holy Quran. Look at Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. What does He say? He says in a verse. إِنْ يَمْسَسْكُمْ قَرْحٌ فَقَدْ مَسَّ الْقَوْمَ قَرْحٌ مِثْلُهُ وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ Listen to this verse very carefully. He says, Good days and bad days are given to the nations, given to the men by turns. وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ نُدَاوِلُهَا Every nation, they have their good days and they have their bad days. Every human being, every individual, we have our good days and we have our bad days. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, and he made a sunnah and tradition by saying, Good days and bad days are given to man by turns, that Allah may test those who believe. Muslims believe in fate, and that is a, that is a fundamental issue, and we repeat again and again. Fate is a fundamental issue. And so a Muslim is always positive and optimistic. Why? Because Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said in a hadith, al-mu'minu al-qawi khayrun wa ahabbu ila Allah min al-mu'min al-da'if. A strong physically, mentally, spiritually believer, a strong believer is better than a weak believer. A strong believer is, a be is better than and more beloved to Allah than a weak believer. Wa fi kullin khayr. However, in every one of them is good. We can't be negative. Every Muslim has good in them. Yeah? And then he said, Ihris ala ma yanfa'uk. That be careful, be, uh, uh, you know, try and benefit from the things that will be beneficial to you. So leave the things that is not beneficial. A lot of us, we engage in, in things that are not really beneficial, beneficial to us. Now, the, the element of strong and weak here is the definition to each of us, 
would be different. Now the person who might, who people would consider to be weak, might himself consider himself to be strong. Exactly. And the second element to it would be, how do you define someone, because many people might perceive it in a negative manner when it says strong. Is it strongness in words, strongness in faith? No, Al-Mu'min Al-Qawi, as I have mentioned, a believer spiritually, physically. Because a, a strong person physically can benefit a lot. And, and Islam highly encourages people to stay fit, you know, to, to be strong. Because a, a person who, has, who is active, who is well, he can benefit and he can serve his religion more than uh, the, the one who is weaker. So in everything, generally a strong believer is better than a weak believer. However... Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to our final segment. Towards the origin and our today's topic for discussion be optimistic before the break we did listen to the definition of what the optimism is all about and how we should refrain ourselves from being pessimistic and our negative thoughts we'll be continuing our discussion today but before that I've been told there's a caller who has been waiting in the line for quite a while we'll take his call and then inshallah we'll continue the discussion so caller assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum caller Assalamu alaikum. Uh, wa alaikum salam. Jazakallah khair for your phone call. Um, yes, what's your question? Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Um, wa alaikum salam. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that the program is very useful, mashallah. We are benefiting a lot from uh, the Sheikh's beautiful words. Jazakallah khair for that. Um, my, my question was, sir, that, uh, I mean, why does the iman go up and down why does it fluctuate um i mean because uh does this only happen to weak people for example uh did the sahabi the the sahaba go through ups and downs in their iman for example like why is it that in this day and age that uh, in the 21st century that our iman goes up up and down right like i can't imagine for example the sahabi the Sahaba going through this, uh, through these stages. Okay, I've got your question, inshallah. I'll be asking that question to the Sheikh, and inshallah, he will be responding to your beautiful question that you have raised. Uh, it's a very inshallah. beautiful point yes. that our brother has raised there. The level of Iman fluctuates, yes. and we do know that. Yes, yes. And if I take it further from the brother's question, we do notice in the blessed month of Ramadan, yep. when we're into the Ramadan, the level of Iman boosts up. Yep. Then we do notice the change as soon as the Ramadan ends. Absolutely so correct. there is an element that we yeah. do feel it as a human being. So how do we because, combat this? Um, first of all, as human beings, we have an important element in our body and that is called Qalb. Heart. Qalb, heart. And the word Qalb came from Taqallub, which means constantly changing. Taqallub, Taqallub. So constantly changing. So we are on a constant change and that, that's something that we cannot reject and we cannot deny. And as brother mentioned about the Sahaba, even some of the Sahaba, they used to come to Prophet alayhi salatu was salam and they used to say, O oh Prophet of Allah, the way we feel next to you when we are near, near you, we don't feel like that when we go home. So why, why does that happen? So Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, as -sa was sa it is time for this and this time for that. So every one of us, we go through these changes and this is natural. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا uh, if the ayah of Allah, if the Quranic verses, if the dhikr of Allah is mentioned in front of them, then the, the iman goes up. So iman goes up and down. This is belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. This is the faith or belief of the Sunni Muslims. So what does one do to make sure his level of iman believe, is maintained and constant? Absolutely, yes. Very important, especially when we live in a society where... The, the 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 society is completely opposite to what we the want challenges to, are there yeah, challenges are there yeah. so uh, at that point i say we have to stay in the company of good people as much as possible in the in the environment of mosque in the environment of of good people having good friends having uh, pious spiritual friends who can help us to boost our iman who can help us to keep our iman um, on on a on a good and average level or in the in the highest level so uh, these are the things can be done jazakallah uh, khair for that answer sheikh my dear viewers if you have similar questions or questions related to the topic 
please feel free to dial the telephone number that is appearing at the bottom of your TV screen, 0208 523 4111, and our guests will be more than happy to answer your questions. Now, Sheikh, coming back to our discussion, yep. and our topic is being optimistic. But we did discuss, and one element I wanted to discuss with you, that today, as Muslims, mm -hmm. we feel the weakness in every sector that yes. we're involved in. Yep. Like, for an instance, we don't want to pray, or we want, we're scared of wearing hijab, mm. or, those, or keeping sporting beard in public places, yes, just yes. in case we might be victimised, or we might be assaulted, mm. things like that. Beautiful question. How do we combat this? Yes, beautiful question. Um, we have kind of lost our confidence, himma. That himma the Muslim used to have. Our Prophet وسلم, he had the best, highest himma. Sahaba radiallahu that's the highest himma, <coughs> the courage. We lost the courage uh, as Muslims and therefore it Why is that, do you think? As and the, we have seen the people there are Muslims they try to hide their identity as correct, Muslims. Correct. They try to hide the, 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 as much as possible that they're Muslims. So there's lack of confidence, there's inferiority complex, there's negativity, negative thoughts, there's down feeling. And that needs to be dealt, and that needs to be addressed. Uh, I believe that when we look at the Muslim Ummah, the, the Muslim world, we see Muslim world, there's a lot of failures, and we must address and we must discuss amongst ourselves that we have uh, weaknesses, we fail in many, many ways at this time. However, that, that is not the end of the world. And as I said, everyone, everyone has their good days and everyone has their bad days. Correct. Look at uh, a beautiful verse from the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ When Sayyidina Ya'qub, Jacob, Prophet Jacob, when he sent uh, his sons to Yusuf to inquire about Yusuf alayhi salam, so he said, all oh, my sons, go and inquire about Yusuf and his brother. And never give up, never give up hope of Allah's mercy. No, never be hopeless, never despair. لا تيأسوا من روح الله. Certainly, no one despairs, no one become hopeless of Allah's mercy except those who uh, believe, uh, those who disbelieve. So إنه لا يأسوا من روح الله إلا القوم الكافرون. No matter how much weaknesses we may have, how much failure we may have. We have good things, and I must agree, we must admit that we have a lot of good things as Muslims, alhamdulillah, even up until today. But it is not as it was in the history. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the beautiful, glorious history of the Muslim, it's not as it was. Uh, however, we still have to have, we can't be hopeless. We still have a lot of good things. So, very important that we remain optimistic and we remain positive. Inshallah. Now, does it mean that as Muslims we lead our life between the balance of hope and fear? Exactly. So that's the word taqwa. Taqwa means bain al khawfi wal raja, which means the word taqwa when we hear again and again. This means the remaining and staying in between hope and fear. So belief of the Muslim, uh, Sunni Muslims, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, ah, is that we fear Allah while we are hopeful. And belief of a, a, a sect in Islam called Al Khawarij, it was based on fear only. Okay. So everything would be would, would depend on the fear. So therefore, they would make a lot of things haram based on fear. Okay. Just because they think it can be a, a sin, so they make haram. And there's another sect called Al Murji'a. They used to uh, base their beliefs and faith on hope. So everything's about hope. We have people in our society who say, oh, don't worry, Allah is kind. You don't have to pray. You know, you don't, even if you don't pray, Allah will, will that, forgive. That, that's very true. If I add that bit a little bit, mm. a lot of people would add into it. Well, I have the intention of going good deeds. Yeah. Now, how do you respond to those kind of things? That I have the intention, yes. but I don't have the amal with it. No, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, That's the hadith. Actions of human beings are judged according to intention. No intention can be counted without action. Ah, so actions are, are parts and parcel of intention. Now, also, Brother Qamar, we also see there are people in our society, those who couldn't do enough for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So probably they had a time when they couldn't worship Allah. They couldn't observe the commandments of Allah. Just to clarify, when you say not enough, is it means that they were involved in ma'siyah, in haram activities, yep. or did not fulfill yes. the obligations we of see, the teaching of Islam? Yeah, we see people are coming sometimes to our mosques and to many imams come, uh, and saying, Brother Imam, we have committed so much sins in our life. We have committed like some sort of, like some really, uh, you know, severe kind of sins. Are we going to be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Mm -hmm. Is there any hope? 
but uh, we always remind to people and we always remind ourselves by saying the ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he says قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said all my slaves, all my slaves those who have transgressed, those who have committed sins excessively never لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Never be despair, never be hopeless from the mercy of Allah. Never think that Allah will not forgive because Allah is غفور. He is most forgiving. غفور is, is, is على وزن فعول. كثير الغفران. A lot of غفران, a lot of forgiving. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is غفور الرحيم. So he forgives and he, he loves forgiving people. And we have that whole chapter in, 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 in our Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is kind and he forgives people. But there's an element to this as well. Many would say mm -hmm. that if he forgives, then why does he punish? Um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives chances to people. Okay. He gives enough time in this world. We get 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, and, and, and sometimes maybe 90 years, and my grandmother lived for more than 100 is. years. Yes, yeah, so we have enough time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us chances more, over and over. And then when we still are uh, neglectful, when okay. we're still heedless, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's a limit to everything. Correct. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala get um, you know, us on, 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 on these kind of negligences. Um, uh, before our time runs out, uh, previously, uh, you've mentioned about the optimist, being optimistic with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how, do, how does one become optimistic with Allah? Like how do we become <laughs> positive with Allah? So many of us, we have, well, I have heard Muslims saying, and even some non-Muslims probably saying, why does God do this to me? You know, Allah, why does he, he's, he's not just, he's not fair. You know, people make those kind of comments. A'udhu Billah. But look at Prophet Sallallahu He says, Husnul dhanni billah min husnul ibadah. Having positive thoughts about Allah, being optimistic about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is part of, parts of, is, 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 is an important part of well-conducted worship. So, husnul uh, ibadah, it has an important part which is uh, the good thoughts about Allah. And also, human beings, we have to have we have to be positive with human beings. Sometimes when we have a person who is ill for a long time, people start saying in our society, oh, you know, we'll never get better. We, we listen. Allah 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 we, we see these kind of things. People make comments, negative comments about uh, people, um, the patients. But look at our Prophet Wasallam When he visited a desert Arab, a Bedouin man, and he used to love visiting the, pay, the, yeah, the sick people. And he, when he visited him, what did he say? He said, La ba'sa tahurun insha'Allah. When he visited the desert Arab, he said, La ba's, nothing to worry. There's no harm, no harm. Tahurun insha'Allah, you'll be purified from your sins. Look at the positive thoughts, positive uh, um, hope that he, he gave to that desert Arab or the patients. And that's a sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we visit, uh, someone who is unwell, we say, What does that mean? Positive. No, that's very true. And to add a little bit that we see in the society, just to add a little bit, that when we see someone who we dislike, someone we have some sort of rivals, we then associate, because he did this to me, that's yeah. why Allah has punished him with giving him ill, um, Ill health that's right. or financially this is, this he is, got destroyed. This is a belief. Now, how, how true is this belief? I think, I think this is a sickness that we, many of us we have uh, and uh, we, we really connect and always link up things with other things. Oh, just because you had an, maybe you like, had an argument with somebody in the morning and in the evening something happened, bad happened. Oh, because of you did because of, you know you did this to me. That's why it happened to you. That's true. No, this is no. There's no any. We don't know the ilm al ghayb. This is all the knowledge of unseen. If someone's saying that and claiming, then as if he's trying to claim that he knows the ilm al ghayb, and so that's, that's a, a biggest that's, sin. That's a, that's, a, that's a very big, dangerous matter. So we have to always remain and say no. We don't know, know everything why it happens. We know things are happening, but Correct. we don't know why it happens. And a lot of our problems rooted to like finding the causes. When we look for the causes, then we, we get into a problem. Uh, and you can, I can give you the example of black magic. So if someone is, for example, so uh, effect, uh, affected by black magic, then people in our society start assuming, oh, probably that person did, or my uh, mother-in-law did, my father-in-law did, or that person. So people start assuming and accusing. 
and that kind of negative thought needs to be avoided in our society That's and especially when it comes to these kind of black magics and no ekhane kintu arekta jinish ami add korte hoy je amader shashurira ba boura ekhane kintu ekta comment kore felen je without dealing with medical illness shobshomoy mm. assume koren je hoyto keu jadu tona koreche yes yes um that that's also there manusho mone koren je amrar madhye onek ache je mone koren kono ekta bemarre asho onek shomoy amra amra inshallah we can discuss that matter on a separate issue a separate program Uh, the 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 dealing with with illnesses how we can deal with illnesses and how we normally muddle up and we we mix up things um before we uh come to the end i want to mention a hadith of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and i mentioned earlier the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had the most difficulties in his life and we know that he was the most responsible is there anybody who has more responsibility than prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam a man who influenced most uh, uh, you know most influential man in the history of humanity yet prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was uh, his wife sayyida aisha radhiyallahu anha was asked about his character so amra bint abd arrahman she said she asked prophet sayyida aisha o oh, aisha how does prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam behave idha khala when he becomes by himself when he becomes alone when he's with family what is what does he do what's his characteristic so she said kana abarran nas he was the best of human beings abarran nas wa akram an nas and he is to be most generous and kind human being dhahakan he is to have sense of humor jolly basaman he is to be smiling at all times prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is to smile at all times this is known in the seerah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam now many of our people they think oh being sign of piety or sign of being religious being gloomy being uh you know uh being harsh uh being unhappy they think that the sign of being being spiritual is these kind of things but when we look at prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam kana basaman what does basam is kathirul basma kathirul tabassum basam again ala wazn fa'al it's it's, uh, it's it's an important thing the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to have sense of humor imam al-shafi'i rahimahullah said ya sahib al-hamm inna al-hamm munfarij he said in a beautiful poem that ya sahib al-hamm o person of worry o person of grief and anxiety in al hamm munfarij don't forget the anxiety worry will fade away in al hamm munfarij abshir bi khairin fa in al farij allah be happy be happy stay positive be optimistic because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the one who removes he is the remover of all the stress anxiety and negativity so very important for us to stay positive in every situation in our life that's very very true now you did mention about how our rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would always had the good sense of humor allahu akbar yes and he was always smiley he was always very kind and with happiness with a positive outlook he used to deal with the challenges that he had now we have an understanding if you're religious you have to always look serious talk serious and the element of replying with a smile back yes is most of the time absent i think how do we when deal professor salam said that word it really is is very effective when he says kalimatu tayyiba a beautiful word a kind word this can be charity this can change a person's complete state the mood and very very important the kalimatu tayyiba a beautiful a kind word uh, and um, uh, we we need to find the ways uh, especially the good words positive and thoughts uh, in order to uh, remove uh, this kind of um, problems okay. um uh, just wanted to mention also uh, that uh, few examples of of the negative thoughts in our people generally amongst the muslims number one some people say that islam will not far- flourish because of the condition that we see islam will not go forward this is wrong we we can never think like that we islam is always will flourish it is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us he's seeing us how we act towards you know this kind of situations but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will take care of our, our religion sometimes we have uh, in our community people are negative from 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 day one from the beginning when they see somebody they make negative comments oh. when they see a alim or a scholar or an imam they make negative negative comments to add a little bit further not only an alim if we see anyone who is successful Yeah. We add a comment to it as if that there's some sort of element of jealousy involved there. Yes, yes. So jealousy can be caused 
a cause of also negativity, being negative. I see. So uh, jealousy can need to be dealt. It's a separate problem. And that's, that's a huge problem in many of us. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. I mean. So negative thoughts about other people, very bad. Sometimes maybe one of our friends or family member is not visiting me. So we start thinking, oh, probably he doesn't like me anymore or she doesn't like me anymore. But we do not know what is going on, what can happen, what's happening. And so we make comments and become negative. Also, sometimes when people have illnesses, we make negative comments. And we make the person more ill even when we make negative comments. So we have to stay positive, as Prophet Sallallahu said. We also have a negative thoughts between the elders and youth, especially in our masajid, in our mosques. So when we go to the mosque, we see the elders are saying, oh, these are youngsters. They do not know much. They're like young. And the youngsters are saying, oh, these are elders, cha-cha. Uncles, they don't know much. Backward thinking. Backward thinking. But we have to respect one another. Elders need to be compassionate to youngers, and youngers need to be respectful to us, el uh, to us elders. So there's an every, every one of them has good. The bridge between the two there generations. There has to be. And I have seen that in, 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 in our youth, in our youngsters, they always or mostly they're making negative comments about the uncles. And, and I understand the uncles, they may have some sort of reservation, as we do as well, as youngsters. But that doesn't mean that we have negative thoughts all the time because they're also producing a lot. We cannot become negative. We sometimes criticize the mosques, you know, although it's run by. But if our elders didn't make and build these mosques, we wouldn't be able to pray as youngsters today. Indeed. So they have done a lot. So we always have to look at the positive things. There are negative th sides as well. But as Muslims, we always look at the positive sides. Um, also, sometimes we make negative comments to our children. Very, very important. A negative comment can destroy the, the future of a child. So when you say you will never become anything, we have heard people are saying to their children that parents are saying to the children because they failed one exam, or maybe like they couldn't do, they couldn't get the mark desired uh, standard. So the parents say, "Oh, you are a failure. You can never do anything." This can destroy the future of a child. So you have to always encourage them, motivate them, make them positive and hopeful, because being hopeless. Being negative is the, is the beginning of all the problems. Yeah, and there's another element to it. If a parents have got three or four offspring yeah. and just unfortunately one of them is not, may not be academically brilliant. Brilliant than the, and like the other one. he's ashamed, he's put down in front of other siblings. What, what impact will that child have? And especially in his childhood, see, the psychology, the I impact must, that he has to go through. Prophet Wasallam never ever belittle anybody any child, regardless of the age, child, you know, children were even more beloved to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He used to love kissing children, he said. Um, uh, and even Hassan radiallahu anhu, they used to, uh, you know, play with Prophet Sallallahu even while he was praying. So, um, you know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would never make, you cannot show me anywhere in the tradition of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he made negative comment or he belittled anybody in front of anyone. So we have to be very careful. Sometimes we think, our oh, children, they're just children. We, we, we kind of become heedless of our children. No, children, they are much more clever than many of, our, many of us in many ways. So let's not, even a six-year-old six year child, seven-year-old child, we, let's not neglect their talents. Let's not neglect their... So let's be positive and give them always encouragement. And this is the teaching of our religion, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jazakallah khairan. With this, we have come to the end of our today's program. Inshallah, I know there's a lot more to cover. Absolutely. And of course, time is always short in terms of when it comes to covering the whole element of the program. Thank you very much for being here with us Barakallah in the alaykum. studio. And inshallah, we hope to see you in next week as well. May Allah bless you. And Junia Qamar, uh, Qamar you, you, mashallah, you've done very well also. I would khair. like to also thank you for your support and for your help. All Barakallah the way Barakallah fikum. Barakallah fikum. With this, my dear viewers, we have come to the end of our today's program. Our discussion was the topic that we have discussed is be optimistic. We have heard the treatment, we have heard the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the embodiment of these traits, of these excellent traits and character. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable these sort of character the character that he always had when it comes to calamities and challenges. He had a positive outlook with everything being optimistic. Inshallah, our next week topic will be confidentiality. And we hope to see you then to discuss more in details with regards to 
confidentiality and how as Muslim we need to deal with this subject. Until we meet again, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiraka wa atubu ilayk, wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.